Yet another Boeing whistleblower has passed away. Is something going on? Let's talk about it. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan. And today we got to talk about Joshua Dean, the second whistleblower who has passed away in a very short period of time. I reported on the first person, John Barnett, and it was fishy. It was in the hotel. They say he took his own life and the scene looked kind of suspicious the way that the gun was there in the shot, it didn't really add up. People are saying that maybe he was deleted because of what he was going to go say. And to talk about John Barnett before we get to Joshua Dean, uh, Barnett was very enthusiastic about whistleblowing. He had been talking about Boeing for quite a long time, public appearances, interviews, everything else. He appeared to be excited to go forward and tell what he knew about the company. He worked there for a very long time. He had deep insider knowledge. And all of a sudden, before testimony that he was going to give, I think maybe to the federales, to the U.S. government, all of a sudden takes his own life in the hotel room. It, it didn't add up. It didn't make any sense. And now we have yet another person who has died shortly after John Barnett's untimely passing. Now, before I go any further into it, let's get to an actual news clip so we can learn a little bit more about what's going on. I also have an article and I will link to everything in the box. But without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. Good morning and welcome back. Here's an eyebrow raiser, a second Boeing whistleblower now dead after experiencing a brief illness. This comes after Joshua Dean expressed concerns over manufacturing issues with the company's 737 MAX planes. Madeline Rivera is live with the latest on this. Madeline. Hey, good morning, Guy. Joshua Dean's family says this all happened very quickly. The 45-year-old died Tuesday after an agonizing two weeks in critical, critical, critical condition. Rather, His aunt tells the Seattle Times Dean started having trouble breathing. He was intubated, got pneumonia, and then MRSA. Before he died, doctors were considering amputating his hands and feet, but he was too weak for surgery. Now, let's, let's, let's pause right here. So they said it was a brief illness. Two weeks. He was sick. And then he w passed away within two weeks. Now, I understand people can get sick. They can not pass away. Happens all the time. But what are the odds of that happening? Another Boeing whistleblower just happens to lose his life from a random illness. Now, if this was the Russian Federation and there was somebody that was going to talk about Putin or the Kremlin at all, and this same thing happened, what would they say? They would say that Putin had poisoned him. That's what they would say. But in this case, we're not going to maybe talk about that particular angle. I don't have any evidence that that's the case, but it makes you think, doesn't it? But I digress. His attorney says Josh's passing is a loss to the aviation community and the flying public. He possessed tremendous courage to stand up for what he felt was true and right and raise quality and safety issues. Dean used to work as a quality inspector for Spirit Aerosystems, a Boeing supplier. He was fired in April 2023. He said it was in retaliation for flagging safety concerns regarding the 737 MAX plane. Dean was mentioned as part of a shareholder lawsuit against Spirit in which he alleged Spirit would throw pizza parties to celebrate a drop in the number of problems. But he said Spirit undercounted the defects instead of actually reducing them. The death of Dean comes just weeks after the death of John Barnett. Barnett was a Boeing whistleblower who local authorities say shot and killed himself March 9th. Which I'm not really believing. The whole thing about behind uh, John Barnett's death is fishy. Very fishy. Now, maybe we could say that the first young man, uh, Joshua Dean, having the random illness. We might could say that was just a coincidence. Maybe. Maybe. But when you put it in context of... Boeing and the problems they're having and how much money is on the line. And then this happens not long after John Barnett mysteriously dies by a self-inflicted gunshot wound. It just, it's just too much. It's too much. 
Barnett was also in the middle of a lawsuit claiming he was wrongfully terminated by Boeing after accusing the company of covering up defects with the 787 Dreamliner. Boeing and Spirit are under a lot of scrutiny after a door panel flew off an Alaska Airlines plane in midair in January. In March, the FAA gave Boeing 90 days to come up with, to come up with an action plan to fix quality control issues. Brian. All right, Maddie. Thank so there we go. That's what's happening with uh, Boeing. Now, we have an article. Okay, Boeing faces 10 more whistleblowers after two die. Quote, people's lives are at stake. All right, now, I'm going to read some of this. This was published today, 10 a.m., so this is pretty recent as far as this article. Um, and I will link to everything, of course, in the box. But let's check out some of this here. So Boeing whistleblowers, including quality engineer Sam uh, Selpour. I know I'm saying that wrong. Ed Pearson, executive director of the Foundation of Aviation Safety and a former Boeing engineer, Joe Jacobson, aerospace engineer and technical advisor to the Foundation of Aviation Safety and engineer for a former uh, FAA engineer, uh, Sean Prusnicki, PhD, professional practice assistant professor for integrated systems engineering at the Ohio State University, are sworn in before they testify at a Senate investigation hearing to examine Boeing's broken safety culture. So, there, there we go right here. All these guys are going to testify. And I hope that something is done. And please protect these individuals. Now, if any of these guys just have an accident or they wind up getting seriously injured or they pass away, now, I mean, look, one might be just a coincidence. Two is getting kind of crazy. Three, okay, something is clearly going on. Somebody has... A vendetta against the Boeing engineers if that happens. And some would say that they have a Boeing, uh, they have a vendetta because of what's going on right now. Let's keep on going here. So it says the sky is falling, at least on Boeing. A second whistleblower has died under mysterious circumstances just two months after another one allegedly shot himself in the head, and the attorneys for both men hope their deaths don't scare away uh, the at least 10 other whistleblowers who want the company to clean up its act. Joshua Wadeen, 45, former quality auditor at Spirit Aerosystems, with, which assembles socialized sections for Boeing, died Tuesday morning from a fast-growing mystery infection. All right, so that's him right there, as we saw in the earlier one. Dean's death comes less than two months after Boeing whistleblower John Barnett, 62, died from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound on March 9th. Now, earlier I was saying that uh, Joshua Wadeen's a young man, He's actually older than I am, but he looks like he's in really good shape, takes care of himself. Okay, so to have somebody who's in shape, fit, health conscious, all of a sudden develop an illness and die in two weeks, what are the odds of that happening, especially given the context of blowing whistleblowers having some issues, right? Like, what, what's the odds of that happening? Let's keep on going. Barnett who had worked for Boeing for 32 years, was found dead in this Dodge Ram truck holding a silver pistol in his hand in the parking lot of a South Carolina hotel after he failed to show up for the second part of a testimony for a bombshell lawsuit against the company. Okay, so again, that's uh, John Barnett right there. He had already been doing interviews and everything, so why would he all of a sudden take his life? For what reason? What would be the purpose of him doing that? I mean, I've not heard anything about a tax report. Was he on medication? What would make him do this? Or maybe somebody did it to him. That's what people are thinking. It's just too fishy. Now you got a second one. I mean, I don't know. There, there's a lot. I'll link to that article from New York Post in the description. But as I close, I want to say this. I hope that this is just a coincidence. That maybe John Barnett was having a tough time. Maybe it was medication. Maybe he decided to go out that way. And I hope that. Uh, Joshua Jean just unfortunately got sick and passed away. Now, may they rest in peace. Prayers out to the family. I'm not wishing for them to be gone, but I don't want it to be what I think that it could be, which is some kind of concerted effort to keep these guys quiet. And then if it is that effort, then the question would be, who is behind the effort? Okay, well, obviously, if it was something going on, Boeing would be behind it, but are we talking about hitmen? Do they have hitmen on payroll? Is it the federales, the federal government? Are they behind it? I don't really know, but something stinks, something's fishy, and I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? What is your opinion about what's going on here? Do you think that it's just a coincidence? No conspiracy, no tinfoil hat. I mean, people 
Sometimes they die. Sometimes they take their own life. There's nothing to it. Or do you think there could be something nefarious behind what's going on? We're talking about not one, but two whistleblowers for Boeing who die in about what? Two months. So March, April, we're not, we're not even at the full two month mark ever since John Barnett passed away about a month and some change a month and uh, three quarters. This is really crazy, really scary, and I hope for the sake of all of us that this is not what I think that it could be. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.